guys, welcome back again. And Dave's mentioned, welcome back again for another video. Welcome back again to the channel. There's your home for tech toys and talk. And of course, the channel where chaos and insanity will always reign supreme. Uh, again, a little bit of chaos and insanity going out, going on in the studio here. Uh, this episode, we're going to talk about, well, let's talk HasLab. You heard that right. Um, now, as of this morning, because I'm recording this on December 12th, 2023, as of this morning, the HasLab has closed for the two-in-a-box Ghostbusters themed HasLab. Let's go ahead and take a look at it very quickly here, guys. So obviously, we're at the HasLab page. We're going to go directly to the uh, two-in-a-box now, right now, we stand at 20... Now, it closed as of midnight last night. It is scheduled. It is slated to be shipped out this fall. But the past couple HasLabs have actually... You know, one or two of them, especially the uh, previous Ghostbusters HasLab, the Pro Spangler's Proton Pack, uh, shipped a little early. So, they say fall, but could this be a little bit sooner than fall? That would be freaking awesome for me. Um... And, of course, all the other Ghostbuster fans out there, because I can't wait to see everyone uh, rocking these out. I know some people are going to keep them on display, but some are definitely going to rock them out with the cosplays. Um, but, I mean, ideally, I would say early fall would be the soonest. I'm saying, like, August, September would be the earliest I would expect seeing this. Uh, it would be great to have these for October, but, you know, we'll see what happens. So... The goal was ten grand or ten thousand, I should say, and we Ghostbuster fans, we came out in droves and we killed it. Twenty four thousand three hundred and sixty one currently. Now that number may change. <clears throat> you might be saying, Dave, what do you mean that number could change? Well, um, they're going to be charging everyone's cards uh, either today or tomorrow. Uh, you might have people who maybe you know they're going through some financial difficulties and they have to cancel their orders. These things will happen. So you might see a slight shift in that number. <coughs> Excuse me. And we don't know what the secondary markets are going to be like either. Last time around, Mercari and Zavi, or not Mercari, but Zavi and a few others internationally were buying up those. So again, we can see number changes here. So what did they unlock? Well, let's have a look here. So you get the PK meter. We get to stand automatically. However, an additional unlock was not only now these are all the unlocks. So we get the uh, the little psychic ESP cards. We get some nice fun decals. Cap Wakanda, of course, the camp where Ray <laughs> got his Stay Puft marshmallows from. Ray's occult books, Stay Puft marshmallows. So it's kind of uh, Ray stand centric, kind of, which is kind of cool. Now we get these blueprints, and I personally, me and a few other people are already planning on framing those uh, when you get them. We get the uh, Hasbro's var variation of the Ghostbusters patch. You can see the white outline on it. Now, <clears throat> we did unlock the holster for the trap. Now, what's very unique about this holster is now, a lot of times we see like a leathered holster. This actually has aluminum. We see some metal. We see some metal. Uh, that is lined with uh, leather straps, so that's very cool. We get the leather holster for the PKE meter. That was another unlock, and we get a little mini puff uh, patch. Now, <clears throat> on top of that, let's scroll back up. They announced that since we broke two thousand, not only or tw sorry twenty thousand, not only did they unlock the engineer patch. That's this. Uh, moogly ghostbuster symbol with the gear with the gear outlines which i think is very cool but we also get a that's right we get a gb ghostbuster engineering through zenmore industries yep that's right winston's uh business obviously is going to have a ghostbuster engineering division and this is a two-sided uh id badge that you get very cool very awesome kind of cool that we get something authentic like this it would be cool if this was like a QR code that you can scan with your phone and it pulls up like a, uh, you know, you can have Ernie Hudson do like a little little intro, kind of Tony Stark-like, and welcome to Zedmore Industries, uh, Ghostbusters Division. You know, do, it would be something kind of cool that they could host, you know, a little, you know, a little 
you know, QR code that reroutes to an online video. That would be something kind of cool. Who knows? Maybe they'll have something like that. But yeah, they unlocked it. Now we get the ghost trap, and this ghost trap is going going to look tremendous. Of course, uh, we have. Now they did say that the transistor here, the little uh, modular unit right here, this can be also modified to put on the side here. So there's a little bit of modifications that you can set for different modes. Of course, we get the pedal. The only thing I'm not too keen on is how thin that little coax cable that 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 wire is i would like something a little bit thicker but you know we can always get a loom that you can slide over it a little bit of red tape like they do in the movies and you're gonna look you're gonna be look you're gonna look golden here we get the trap cartridge that comes out of the trap unit itself so if you have a, a containment unit or your ghostbuster franchise and you have your own you know, containment unit, you can kind of recreate the sliding maneuver when you're locking the ghost into your containment unit. There's going to be different modes here. Now, as you guys saw, we'll, before we scroll back up, there's two rods here, two silver rods. These rods, once connected onto the trap frame, will allow Ghostbuster 2 sounds, possibly the Scolari Brothers and many, many more. So that's very awesome right there. Now, I'm not going to go through every single detail here, guys, because let's be honest, Adam Savage, uh, formerly of the Mythbusters and a, a, a prop god himself, uh, did a video last week, and I definitely recommend going ahead and checking it out. I'm actually going to have a link in the video description below if you want to check out Adam Savage's video. I highly recommend you do, because he is a Ghostbuster fan just like all of us but he's also a prop maker so you know he put it through its paces and what's great is there's going to be room to modify this trap even further which i can't wait for now i've i've had a pke before i've had the spirit halloween pke this will be my first screen accurate pke meter but what's also cool is they added some additional features it is going to have an emf detector electromagnetic fields which is often used i mean if you if you talk to anyone who is an actual ghost paranormal investigator, someone who does go to a, go on ghost hunts, they have electromagnetic field uh, EMF readers. Now, this isn't going to allow you to find the studs in your walls, but it's going to be it's going to be a nice, fun little gimmick to, to do. You know, maybe you're looking for for something. You can go ahead and use your PKE for that. Many different modes. We have the taser mode. Um, honestly, the the stands. I have plans for the stands here for both the uh, trap stand and also for the uh, for the PKE stand. I plan to do a little bit of painting. Now, when they did the Spangler one, they gave us like a brown, like a dark brown looking one. And I actually painted mine silver. But that is until I got rid of it because I keep, I keep my Spangler one with my uh, pack all the time. But this is very cool. I'm curious to think. I'm curious, everyone who's watching this right now, what are your thoughts? Now now that we have a proton pack, we have a neutrona wand, we now have a trap and a PKE. What's the next HasLab for Ghostbusters? Potentially speaking, what could the next HasLab be? Would it be a play set? Would it be a, uh, you know, a plasma series, uh, you know, six inch figure uh, version of the Ecto-1? We never got that, and that would be really cool to have. Or, do you think they would try to do a firehouse? Or, what are your thoughts? What do you think they can do? I know some in the Ghostbusters community want a slime blower. Logistically speaking, I don't think it's viable. It's too large of a prop. If you've ever seen anyone wear a slime blower in person from Ghostbusters 2, they are massive. They don't have a whole lot of electronics to them either. There's only a few switches, maybe a trigger. But I mean, uh, I'm not sure that that would wholly and completely be viable. But I want to know what you guys think. I mean, there's still room to have, a, you know, a ecto goggles. I mean, technically speaking, they could sell ecto goggles and not be a HasLab. They could work a lot of a lot of magic and put some gimmicks and some nice uh, features in there. But... I mean, what do you guys want to see? I want to know what you guys are thinking in the comment section below. I want to know what you guys think of this. But also, <clears throat> let's take a look at the history of HasLabs. What do you say? 
So we're at the ha main HasLab page. Now we're going to look at the HasLabs that have funded. And we're going to take a little, little tally here. Okay. Okay. Most recent is the Cobra Hiss Tank, which many uh, YouTubers are reviewing right now. Uh, I've heard some, some hits and misses with this. Um, but I mean, G.I. Joe is a very hot brand right now. The fact that they gave us a six inch scale Cobra Hiss Tank, I missed on on that. Um, let's just take a quick look at it. Now, this was, again, retailing for 300, 26,772. Their target was 8,000. Okay. So, again, they blew the numbers out of the water, very much like Ghostbusters did, but they gave us, like, take a look at this. This is right out of the cartoon, along with a few extras, like the, the, you know, the canopy looks pretty awesome. We had electronics in here. This lights up, and I know everyone, including a friend of the channel, uh, Oker Studios, Vern. Hey, Vern has said that this is, you know, it does resemble like Knight Rider and a DeLorean at the same time. You know, it's a troop carrier. We got seat right here. This opens up, but there's only one seat in there, which is a little bit of a disappointment. We get the light-up display right here. They gave you a figure, but then they had their, <coughs> excuse me, they did a little, little cartoon thing where they kind of rescripted like a Cobra Takeover. You have modular panels that you can take off of this if you want. See, you got weapon, uh, weapon holes holding uh, like a little weapon storage compartment right there. I mean, there's you can have a gunner right at the top and they had their they you know they had their own like uh they did a vote thing what would you like what color soldier would you like in addition to that and they had stretch goals they had a little extra missile launchers i mean they had everything here you had a cobra that's on card which i know some people are going to keep uh on card and not off I mean, this is just, I mean, they blew it out of the friggin' water, let's be honest. Now, let's go back. Okay, Transformers. Transformers Generations has lab Death of Source. Now, unless you are a diehard Transformers fan, you're not going to know him unless you follow the uh, Japanese, uh, you know, the Japanese continuation of Transformers. He's from their cartoons and from their canon. Uh, not ne not necessarily anything that North American fans will really know unless they're diehard fans. But they they still pulled that one off. 27,442. Their goal originally was 11,000. I mean, don't get me wrong. He looks very badass. You know? He's got his weapons. He's got his, his the, you know, his death of source form, if you will. You know? A lot of different modes here. A lot of different accessories, you know, $179. Now, that was under $200 for a HasLab. Kind of unusual, but hey, we'll go with it. Of course, the G.I. Joe Firefly. Or, sorry, the Dragonfly said Firefly. My correction, guys. Again, an amazing look at the details in the cockpit right there. I mean, they friggin' killed it. They did an amazing job. Anyone who's a fan of the cartoon, you know you went in on this $274.99. Uh, again, their end numbers were 24764 goal of uh, 10000 So just two two seventy five. 275 They killed it right there. Okay? G.I. Joe is a hot commodity. Look at all the accessories and effects that they gave you right there. A stand? just amazing so now the most recent successful star wars offering was the ghost from you know star wars rebels now they did pull this off i'm hoping that they don't blow the ship up in ahsoka season two or any other uh upcoming disney plus star wars shows but they brought everything accurate. They brought everything to life from the animated series. This was priced at five hundred dollars, a little bit, a little bit more pricey, you know. But they did reach their goal: twenty-one thousand seven hundred sixty-eight. Original target was eight thousand. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I mean, the 
detail and paint on here. They did amazing jobs here. You know, the weathering, the figures. I mean, we get hair with, with this. Everything looks great. Now, this is vintage scale. So this isn't Black Series scale. I doubt we'll ever get a Black Series uh, scale from Star Wars, at least as far as Haslam. We get the middle little shuttle. And, I mean, they did, I mean, for, for what it was, they did a good job here. They did a good job. <clears throat> now, the one, the vintage, vintage uh, scale, the three and three quarters, is not necessarily something that I'm aimed at. Um, also, not knowing the full history of the ghost, this is something that's kind of more of a niche, but they still pulled it off. Which is the first time in a couple of years that they were able to do a successful black or successful star wars uh has lab because let's let's just skip ahead okay now back in 2019 they did they did jabba's barge okay they succeeded with that then they also succeeded in 2022 with the razor crest but of course the razor crest was shortly destroyed <laughs> on the show so you wound up with something that was only a reference to a certain time frame early on in the Mandalorian series. Uh, they failed with the Rancor. They failed miserably with the Rancor, mostly because they were trying to do, oh, well, we have this cardboard diorama. It was just, I mean, the figure itself looked good. The accessories were something that, I mean, they were trying to do stretch goals, <clears throat> excuse me, of various figures. And that did not fly. I mean, they're trying to give us some bones. I mean, you could go to, uh, you know, a dollar store or a Halloween store, and buy like different bones and do a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, modeling yourself and you can weather them and bam. Gamorrean guard, Luke, uh, of course, uh, Salacious, Salacious Crumb. Uh, those, those were your start at a cardboard, a cardboard backdrop. Those were our stretch goals. And that's why it failed. It failed miserably. I mean, you the target was 9,000, and they could even reach that. It was 8,533. Compared to the other numbers we've looked at so far, that's pretty damn sad in itself right there. Okay? But that's not the only failure. They tried to do a double-sided uh, double lightsaber from Riva, from the, the third sister from the uh, Kenobi series. And again... It did not fund. I mean, looking at... Let's do a little close-up here. This looks plastic. I mean, if, if you can't even give it an appearance that it looks like it's metal or die-cast, I mean, everything looks very... The, this is obviously 3D rendering right here. But they showed us other pictures. It just... It looked very cheap to me. It looked very cheap. And the fact that they already sell, they already sell, you know, their their FX line, their their Star Wars edition of lightsabers for usually around 275, 265, and in some cases up. I mean, what were they thinking with this? I, I don't think they were thinking at all. I mean, their goal was 5,000, and they couldn't even get half. They got 1,413 backers at the time of closing. At the time of closing, that's all that they had. So that was a fail. So right there, those are one, two failures of Star Wars. Okay? The other failure, Marvel. Marvel failed recently. Uh, not, not the most recent one, but the one before that. They tried to do the Engine of Vengeance. And sadly, uh, they did not... There were, there were things that were missing on here. I mean, there, they had plenty of effects on here. You could swap out the wheels so it looked like they were on fire. They gave us effects. They wanted you to pay three fifty. dollars Goal was $9,000. $5,060 was, was where they were left at. They wanted you to pay three fifty. dollars They gave you Ghost Rider. There's accessories here. However, a lot of things are missing here. I mean... You could have, you know, you could have left everything off and you could have treated this like, oh, you could have pretended it was Blaze, uh, Blades uh, Charger. I mean, there's a lot of things you could have done with this, but they just, it didn't feel like they were giving us enough 
enough for that high of a price point. Now, coincidentally, another toy maker is actually releasing their own version of this at a much lower price point of around $200, uh, give or take, around the price range of roughly $200. So, I mean, the fact that a third-party toy maker can kind of create their own offering at $150 less. Enough said right there, guys. So, yeah, this was a fail for Marvel. This was also HeroScape, Age of Annihilation. If you're not familiar with it, it is a tabletop game. And they did a crowdfunding for this. They did a HasLab. And sadly, 4,353 backers, out. Of, they were hoping to get 8,000. They did not get that. So this was going to be everything you would have got. I think a tabletop game, a HasLab, was shooting for the moon and beyond. And it was doomed to fail. I seriously think they could have done a pro separate project for maybe, you know, expansion sets. They could have launched it a little bit better, but sadly they failed with it. I don't think tabletop games are where HasLab should be. Unless it's a very well-known IP, I think you're doomed to fail. I really do. Now, of course, the HasLab Proton Pack. 19,062 backers. Originally, the target was seven thousand. Uh, this one, this was definitely a gamble. It was a gamble because uh, a year or so before Hasbro had released the Spangler's Neutrona one, and we were like, oh, "Wait a minute, you have connectors, so we can connect this? Are you going to come up with a proton pack?" And they did. And the fact that they could offer a one to one, a one to one scale proton pack, which of course yours truly does own. Um, and they were, I think this was around. $400, uh, $400 at the time. Now, being someone who has built full-scale one on -one, uh proton packs, they go for a hell of a lot more than that. I mean, you're probably talking easily $1,000, if not twelve to 1300 in some cases. So the fact that they're off offering us the opportunity to have a functional proton pack already made that will interlock with the Spangler one for a third of the cost of building one from scratch. I mean, if you're making one not out of foam, uh, you're not buying like a, uh, a spare proton pack, you know, from Spirit Halloween, which there's nothing again, nothing wrong with that. I've built them off of the Spirit Halloween packs before. But to give us such a one-to-one -one scale was unheard of. And all the features and abilities in here were unheard of. And the stretch goals that they gave us um, you had, if you backed it within the first 48 hours, you get the slime feature. Here's where you can connect the Spangler one via a hose to the pack itself. The hose was a stretch goal. You got the marshmallows, the melted marshmallow all over the pack. You also got the mini puffs, the scorched mini puffs. We have a whole whole host of uh, decals and fun stickers. We got England's uh, journal instruction book. Here is the stands. This shows you that, I mean, this is one of the perks. This pack allows you to actually open it up and see the core for the, for the very first time. This was, you know, this was a game changer for cosplayers and for Ghostbuster fans around the world. Now, the Sky Striker. I know people who went two or three deep on these. Now, what was great about the Sky Striker? It again, they went, they went, they swung for the moon, and they did it. I mean, all these accessories, figures, a stand, uh, refueling and rearming uh, vehicles right here, and also they gave you alternate stickers so you could have as if a Sky Striker was stolen by Cobra, and Cobra, re, you know, rebranded it. They gave us so much in here. And I believe these were all three and three quarters. I could be wrong. They look like they're three and three quarter figures. They gave you parachutes. They gave you all this stuff here. Yep, including ketchup and mustard. Now, they were, their numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, their numbers were 15,035 and 10,000. They, obviously, they blew it out the water. G.I. Joe is a strong the strong one right now as far as things go um 
G.I. Joe and Ghostbusters are relatively new to the, Has the HasLab game, but they've been succeeding both times. Well, technically, let's see. We have two. We have the two in the box, and we have the Proton Pack. We have Sky Striker. Okay, we have Sky Striker. We have the Dragon, uh, the Dragonfly, and we have the His Tank. That's three in a row. Three in a row for G.I. Joe. Two in a row for Ghostbusters. Now, Transformers, they've been successful every time as well because they also had Unicron from the War for Cybertron. That was back in 2021. Uh, they they squeaked by. They did about uh, 2,000 above. Now, it's weird that they have an even number here. Their goal was 8,000. They did 10,000. Might have been retailers who came through and, and got that. Uh, this thing was is massive, of course. Um I mean, you have the stand right there. Do they have any pictures showing scale? Probably not. But this thing is friggin' massive. The amount of detail on here. Everything. Um, they also did this one. Victory Saber. Again, not out of the current... Uh, or the North American uh, anime, animated shows. But this is something that obviously is one of those collector items. If you're a big collector of Transformers and you follow a lot of the, the Japanese anime uh, variations, the Takara lines of Transformers, then you're going to know this one. So there you go. This one was 26,211 out of 11,000. So obviously they, they know what they're doing there. Now, let's take a look at Hasbro. Hasbro failed with Engine of Vengeance, we know. They succeeded with Galactus. I know several people who have Galactus, and they also have the Sentinel from a couple of years back. And there you go. He is massive. He, basically, they just did an outer shell slightly different, but they used the same mechanics from the Sentinel. Galactus looks very, very insane. You got the lights, the eyes, and there he is scaling with a six inch Marvel Legends figure of Reed Richards, of course. Now, of course, he was 30,811 backers and 14,000 was the original target. So I believe right now Galactus is the top uh, winner when it comes to numbers. There we go. We got the Sentinel right there. Sentinel was 21,873 minimum was 6,000. Of course, he's got his his uh, robotic tentacles that come out of his wrist so he can attack mutants, grab them. Uh, he looked amazing. I know people who have him. Uh, you got alternate heads. You got all these tiers here. We love options, but they have to be options that are going to grab Joe Average. You know, that's the thing right here. Now, this one. The sale barge, $500, but this thing is completely and utterly massive. This was one of the earliest ones they did, 5,000 plus backers. That's all they have listed here from 5,000. Insane, insane. I mean, it's the scope of it. And who, What Star Wars fan wouldn't want the barge from Return of the Jedi? That kind of goes without saying. They also, Marvel did uh, Giant Man, and they succeeded with him. Although it was kind of uh, close for a little while. It was 10000 but then it reached 13889 This is something I think was more, com if you're a comic book fan of uh, Ant-Man and Giant-Man, this is, this is something you had to have. Now, their stretch goals were a zombie head, a zombie faceplate, and also a, uh, excuse me, and also a scroll faceplate. Now, my problem with, with this is this. If you're going to do a zombie faceplate, you need to swap out maybe an arm or something something to show like maybe where he was bit. You know, when we've seen the zombie figures in the past, like Zombie Cap, Stark, uh, Wanda, they they like they look all decomposed. Like their ar the armor is distorted and you know decomposing and rusted and blood and. We, you, if you're going to offer a zombie face, you got to offer something else to go with it. This was not something that interests me at all, but I know plenty of people who were interested by it and because that's what they collect. They collect the classic comics. They 
they collect these figures because it brings back the memories and that's why it succeeded. Um, as of late, I really think Hasbro is kind of missing the mark with some things. Now, don't get me wrong. G.I. Joe classified series and Ghostbusters plasma series, they're killing it. They could do, but with Ghostbusters, I think they could do more. I think if they, you know, because when Ghostbusters Afterlife was really, originally going to come out that summer, they were bringing back the real Ghostbuster uh, action figures from the cartoon. They reissued the Ecto-1, which I still have un unopened in a box, and they gave us the original Ghostbuster figures. We were hoping that they were going to continue it, keep bringing out more of the figures, but they stopped the line for some reason. I don't know why. There's plenty of people who are still looking for those. Um, I think some of the teams, like I think the G.I. Joe, or not G.I. Joe, but Marvel Legends and Star Wars teams, they need to rethink their strategies. They really do, at least in my opinion. What do you guys think? I want to know what your thoughts are. If you could choose a HasLab of any brand that's under the Hasbro umbrella, what would it be? Or what is something that you think that they could do that they haven't thought of yet? Do you want them to do more props? Do you want them to do um, action figures? Do you want them to do a play set? Like, could you imagine if they did like a, you know, a rebel hanger, like from Hoth from, from Empire Strikes Back? Or would you like them to see, uh, would you like them to do like a Cybertronian play set for Transformers? Um, you know, we've had the Razor Crest. What about a, what about a six inch? Uh, I doubt that they'll ever do a six inch for Star Wars, but what if they gave us a, a new updated version of the Millennium Falcon? I mean, there's a lot of stuff they could do out there, but I want to know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on this? What is the future of HasLab? Do you think some, do you think Star Wars should take a break for a year or two? Maybe more? Uh, do you think Marvel Legends needs to rethink things? Do you, do you think Marvel Legends is getting a little tiring in their offerings? You know? Would you like to see someone else take over the Marvel Legends brand? What is something that you guys want to see as far as the future of HasLab goes? Do you think that if something is around $200 or roughly around there, uh, do you think if something is like around $250 or 200 that it shouldn't be a has lab and it should just be retail items that you or it could be uh if they really want to drive their money they can make it pulse exclusives you know um what are your thoughts on this and i know this comes on the heels of, of a story that's been been breaking with uh, cnbc about uh sadly uh this is something that's going on hasbro is apparently laying off 1100 workers now, personally, I don't think that that's the way that they should be moving forward. They should be looking at their leadership, I think. I think they should be looking at their corporate leadership and also leadership for each of the different brands. They have different teams, but sometimes they have crossover with people who are working on both G.I. Joe and maybe Power Rangers Lightning Collection, for example. Um, but I think some of the leadership, I think it's the leadership in corporate and also the leadership for the individual brands. I think they need to reevaluate and I think they might need to restructure a couple of the teams, maybe get more fan oriented people on there. Not just people who, oh, well, I, I sculpted with uh, Power Rangers. I'm going to sculpt with, uh, you know, Star Wars now. But if they're not a true fan, then they're just doing it for a paycheck. They're just doing it for a job. We've seen it with G.I. Joe Classified Series. We've seen it with Ghostbusters Plasma Series. We've even seen it a lot of times with Marvel that when you have fans making these items for fans, that's when you get the home runs. That's when you're driving, you're driving those sales, no matter the cost. If something is so amazing that to a fan, they're like, I got to get this myself. But if you get like, so we see it during some of the lives that they do when they, when they launch these has labs or when they're launching new items, you get some people who just seems like they're, they're, they're trying too hard. You know, they're putting on too much of a fake persona. When we get the genuine reactions, when we get someone who's very genuine and passionate about a project and they're saying, Hey, we worked on this. We did this. We did this. That comes across on, off our phone screens, off our computers, off our phones, and that gets us going. We're looking at it on our breaks. Maybe we're, you know, taking extended lunch because we want to watch that stream and we want to see these items being revealed and we see how awesome these people are, how energized and enthused they are. That carries over to us 
it's like a virus. It infects us, and then we want to get those figures. We want to get that that vehicle. We want to get that HasLab. But unless they're doing that, I think they're they're you know swinging and missing. Now, me being a Ghostbusters fan, do I think that the two in the box was an amazing amazing uh, project? I think it's great that we get a trap, a working a trap with working pedals. We get an amazing looking PKE, but I think the stretch goals were a little a little cheap for my personal taste. Um, I think they could have done a lot more. Uh, the holsters, I know. Uh, a few people were disappointed that the holsters weren't included. You would think that that's part of the prop, but, you know, what do I know? You know, I'm just a crazy guy in his 40s on YouTube talking about these uh, items. Uh, the patches, sadly, uh, I, I, my personal opinion, I don't think that they're very high-quality patches. No, I, I don't. Uh, just for example, now, I... I, as you can see, I collect patches myself. I have a bunch of Ghostbuster patches behind me. I also cl collect some sci-fi patches. I have a uh, Doctor Who Gallifrey patch. Now, now you can see the different coloring and shading on here. And I also have a patch from Hook and Ladder 8. That is the actual firehouse in New York City. is a functional firehouse down on North Moore Street in Tribeca. This is their official patch. And you can see there are different levels of stitching here. It's not, it doesn't just look like a flat thing of stitch, which is kind of like what some of theirs look like. But you can see the actual stitch work. And by the way, if you're if you're someone who actually loves Ghostbusters and you want a patch like this, you can only get these at the firehouse in New York City. Hook and ladder eights. You can go there, they do sell oh, they sell patches and pins, uh, t-shirts, hoodies, everything goes back into the firehouse goes to fun uh hook and ladder eights and also the fdny uh go ahead you, they do uh, they take cash only so go ahead and check them out shameless plug for hook and ladder eights they are amazing group of people there i mean they protect i mean as as their job they're the fire department that's there to save their save people's lives car accidents fires cats in a tree someone's having a medical emergency they're there 24 7 to help people out so it helps to helps to give right back to them guys but yeah this is one of my favorite patches of all time to be perfectly honest and yes they actually have this emblem on their vehicles and painted outside the uh firehouse itself uh but that's the thing is some of these patches looked a little looked a little cheap to me and i'm sure that there are those in the ghostbuster collectors community community who are probably going to come up with some of their own patches that are going to look a little bit better because when I, and I don't, I'm not necessarily putting these down, but in a way I am. This just looks very flat and one dimension or two dimensional, you know, whereas some of these patches, you can feel the stitching, you know, you can feel the stitching in the different levels on here, you know, I mean, you can see the attention to detail, but, you know. It is what it is. Uh, hopefully, the next Ghostbusters Habs Lab is going to be a little step a step above. I mean, the stickers are, you know, they're kind of cool. You know, we get the cards and the blueprints. I was hoping maybe like a little a uh, little notebook on how to use the PKE and the uh, the trap. I think that would have been cool. But I got to take a look at my uh, Spangler, uh, my Spangler manual that I have. Let's take a look at that real quick. I actually have the Spangler. This is what came with the uh, Hazlab Proton Pack. Uh, it talks about the talks about the containment units, Gozer, some of the weapons and tools of the trade. Um, they do briefly touch on the uh, trap, but it would be cool to have a little bit more into it, you know. I think it would be cool to have something uh, something a little, little bit extra. You know? This is some of the stuff that they gave us with that uh, Egon Spangler journal. I keep it right with my Ghostbusters display, which is right next to the desk here, obviously. But guys, again, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Your thoughts on HasLab, not just Ghostbusters, but Star Wars, Marvel, Transformers, G.I. Joe... 
what are the next HasLabs you guys want to see? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, you can always message me at Dave's underscore dimension on Instagram, or you can email me directly at Dave's dimension 78 at gmail.com. And of course, as always, if you want to add me to PlayStation, you can do that right there at Dave's underscore dimension. And if you feel so inclined, you want to help out the channel with a few of our technical up upgrades that we're trying to get done. Uh, there's our PayPal right there at Dave's dimension. It's not required, but greatly appreciated if you do, but guys, until next time, this is Dave from Dave's dimension saying, keep on busting. And you know, what I'm going to say, I say it every single time. Keep on busting. And I'm always going to catch you on the flip side. Take care. Thank you.